Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's special presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase on Cybersecurity. This is season three, episode three of the ongoing series covering exciting startups from the Amazon ecosystem. I'm your host, John Furrier, and today we are excited to have CUBE alumni, Naj Hussain, founder and CEO of Elastio, back to talk about data resilience in the cloud. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks, John. Great to be here. Saw so the CUBE conversation you guys did great on the last year. Let's, before we get into some of the questions on the resilience, the data resilience story in the cloud, yeah. tell me about the market you guys are targeting, um, business model of the company. Give a quick intro to what you guys do. Yeah, so uh, we target right now cloud. Everything we've done is built around uh, cloud native, cloud services and, and providing data resilience in the cloud ecosystem. And as you know, the operating model in the cloud is much different than on-prem and the technologies in the cloud to make that work and scale and uh, be cost performant for the customer is much different than an on-prem architecture. So we started out with the cloud in mind, all our technology is focused on the cloud. Um, so we, we work today on Amazon, you'll see us go to multiple clouds soon, namely Azure, GCP, the, the big triumvirate. Um, but that's uh, that's where we start. We usually we we focus on uh, the 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 personas we focus on are the cloud security folks. Um, also, the infrastructure people get involved as as well because it's data. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of in between both of those uh, two folks. The mandates usually come down from uh, when it comes to data resilience from the cloud security teams. They want to know that the, they have high integrity in their data, that the data is not compromised. Uh, but the, the the result is that the infrastructure team gets involved in that as well. Awesome. Talk about the business model. How do people consume the product, service? Go quick overview. Yeah, very, 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 very good. So it's available right out of the AWS marketplace right now. So we we work with a lot of the Microsoft partners. Um, also, we have a, a, a direct team that, that works with customers directly to get them deployed. It's a very simple way to deploy. It, it installs literally in 10 minutes. It's through a, a CloudFormation template. That's just a technical thing, but it's point and click literally. Uh, and then you're you're able to deploy the platform very quickly. And the product and technology, what's the secret sauce? Give a quick over to the product. Yeah, what is it, what great. Is it? Uh, buy it, uh, download obviously, but you know, <laughs> and the secret sauce. Yeah, very good. So it's a it's a from the marketplace. It's a it's a it's a service that's downloaded into the customer account. One thing that's very unique about what we do, everything's operated in the customer VPC, so it lives in the customer account. So the data never leaves that account. That's a very important uh, component of the platform. Um, so uh, a couple of the core technologies, there's kind of two areas there. One is our deep inspection, our data integrity engine, and our ability to finally detect ransomware, malware, and corruption inside the data. And that's not an easy thing to do. When you think of uh, many of the, maybe some of the other solutions where they figure out about, they talk about anomaly detection, that's a much different value proposition. We're inside that data and looking for very specific ransomware and malware, and we can prescribe exactly what we find. We've spent, you know, over the last three years, reverse engineering over 1800 ransomware. So we know what they look like. Uh, we've built a very uh, uh, aggressive ML engine that's very fine tuned to figure those, uh, to find those compromises. We also have a, a storage engine as well. It's a, we call it a secondary storage engine, compression, global dedupe built in. And the, and the purpose of that is so you can keep retention of those, uh, those, those assets at a lower cost, but it gives you threat intelligence over time. So companies now, we have post-attack recovery built in. So we find the compromises, we let customers recover as well. So you solve a lot of problems and do more. <laughs> With, yeah, we solve a lot of problems. It's a big pain point in, in enterprises today. All right, so let's get to the customers. What's the main problem you solve for them? Obviously ransomware is hot, everyone wants to not get hit. Obviously you mentioned malware, you mentioned a bunch of other things in the data. What is the customer pain point? What are you solving? What problem do you solve? And what benefits are they getting? Yeah, so it's all about knowing what's inside that data. If my data is compromised, that's a that's a big vulnerability for the, for the enterprise. And if the data is compromised and you don't know about it, that means it gets replicated. That means it gets in your backups. So now my backups are compromised. So it's imperative for companies to know that their data is not compromised. And if it is, they'd like to know it's compromised early and often so they can remediate the issue. <laughs> so that's a big threat for businesses now. Yeah. I mean, ransomware, I mean, these guys are smart. This is an extinction level events, even for big banks, right? It's, it's very risky. And this, these ransomware gangs are very, very, sophisticated now I mean, they're they're enterprise businesses they're like a pyramid scheme they all get paid if they if they get a get a ransom pay so um it's it's a deep you know there's a deep bench of these bad guys out there running around trying to 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 uh 
you know, compromise these the enterprises. And that's what we're here to help yeah. and make sure that data stays uncompromised and make sure businesses can recover the data when they need it safely. Well, it's a great mission. I love, I love what you guys are doing. I think this is super important. Obviously cloud technology uh, is there to help too. Now you got AI, you mentioned machine learning before. We're going to have a lot yeah. more assistance, hopefully. Um, but let's get into the data resilience in the cloud because this is the topic of, of this talk and, and, and congratulations for your success. It's, it's well, de well deserved. Um, what are the biggest risks um, to cloud resiliency, cloud data resiliency that mo most organizations don't have on their radar? I mean, obviously ransomware, everyone's scared to death of. I mean, that's disruptive, yeah. disables, and could put some out of business. What, what, are the, what are the other biggest risks? Yeah, good question. So, so I think, look, most companies right today, they're using all sorts of perimeter uh, protection. So you'll, you'll have perimeter protection, network protection and so on already established. But what's happening, unfortunately, is those defenses are getting compromised and the data is getting hit. So it just takes one vulnerability, one in an EC2 instance that's serviced to the public, public, to the public network and they can drop a payload. They can circumvent maybe agent-based uh, protection as well. So they're very sophisticated and you comp and, and you kind of layer that on the complexities of the cloud with the sheer nature of the, dy the dynamism of it on demand. And you're running thousands of instances, potentially thousands of containers. It's very hard to keep up. So all that needs to be handled in an automated way. So you can constantly be checking that data to make sure there's not compromises in it. So the, the risk to the business is numerous, right? So if there's compromises in that data, what happens? So now that threat now can pervade my infrastructure. So now it's in my replicas, right? And now it's in my in my backups, which get replicated to different regions. So now I have these threats sitting around. And to compound that problem is if if the um, the dwell times of these things, yeah, they may be coming down in duration, but they usually live longer than the retention period. So that means that my recoveries are compromised as well. So I can't get back. So it's a compounding problem and it's a huge risk for businesses. So we try to, uh, when we work with our customers, they deploy us closest to the application where the application generates that data. So that data can get scanned immediately. And we create a copy of that for the customer too, so they can recover that if they need to, God forbid, if they're infected. What's the other solutions out there? Who else is trying to do this? What, what makes you guys different? What's unique? Yeah, so in the cloud, we, we don't know of anybody doing this that's doing deep inspection of the data inside the cloud. So we're in a, we're in a, a pretty fun spot right now. So. We have to, we're, we're pushing on the gas. We're, we're accreting customers as fast as we can right now. Uh, you'll see us go to multi-cloud, which is a big demand for that, Azure, GCP, as you can imagine. Uh, so we're super excited. And uh, right now we're just, we're, we're, we're full speed ahead. Raj, talk about some of what the customers are saying about you guys. If I asked your customer base, what would they, what would they say about you guys? Why you, yeah, so what value you provide? What's the experience been like? A couple things. So I think you know, customers will say they love the clarity that they get into the threats that they have in their data, right? Because we constantly give, we give them a dashboard, they have visibility into that point in time exactly what's going on. So they know if they have a compromise or an undetonated malware or an active ransomware in the system, they'll know that immediately. So they love that portion of it. They also love to know that they can sleep at night. <laughs> Right, that that my my data has been scanned. I know I can recover. God forbid if I'm hit, I have a safe way to recover, and that's the biggest I think benefit to the customers is knowing that they have a way to recover yeah. and they won't lose their job. <laughs> right. I mean, look at I mean that's like number one. Job, yeah. I mean, risk management has always been a thing, but if you're out of business, you're not doing business. I mean, this is really yeah, that's the, right. disabling uh, opportunities for the for the bad guys, and they know they got leverage. Uh, if they yeah. don't, if they know the data is corrupted, they don't. They, uh, it's a no-brainer. Okay, I got the next question is obvious. One, the next step is okay. Great, you sold me. What questions should business ask themselves to kind of get a pulse of if they're even in a position to have strong resiliency or has strategy in place, um, and when to call you? <laughs> like, what are the signs yeah, besides the house burning on fire? Yeah, you want to do it before that, right? So, so I think a couple things. So. Businesses ask themselves numerous questions, right? Am I testing the integrity of my data for compromises? Am I doing that? Do I know if my backups are recoverable? It's a very standard question. Do you know that? Um, is my data clean, right? Is it uncompromised and recoverable? There's a the big, big components there. Um, if ransomware is activated, what's my post-attack recovery? What do I do? How do I get my How do I get my application back? Right, so those things are paramount to understand and we can help businesses under answer those, some of those questions and give them more confidence in their ability to operate in this uh, landscape of, 
of high ransomware threat. Rush, how do businesses know if they can recover or not, or if their data is clean? Is there like a benchmark or what's the, what's the test? Yeah, so the, the, the test is to actually inspect it, right? So the only way to know if you can recover it is by looking inside. In the cloud today, when you use Amazon or, or, or cloud native snapshots, for example, which most, most customers use, they're opaque. You don't know what's inside of them. So I protect them, I make them immutable, great. That's a good thing. You want to make them immutable so the bad guys can't delete them, awesome but you, you could be, you could be, they could be compromised. They could have threats inside. So you want to make sure of two things. One, that it's clean before you make it immutable and then make sure they're immutable so they can't be deleted. So that the combination of those two things give you a, a assured recovery. All right, that's awesome. First of all, this, I mean, we all know how bad it is out there and this is a great, great story. You have a great story over there. Congratulations, this is what's needed. This is kind of a new way. That's why I love the next gen cloud. It's, it's bringing a lot more. I'm sure AI is going to help you. Uh, yeah. Before we get into that kind of next wave, if a company's out there like, all right, I'm always scared of getting ransom, we're losing all our videos. Like how do I, <laughs> we're not a small, small company compared to your customers. How, how can someone get involved? What, how do they engage? Okay, I'm, I'm sold, I want to I wanna buy, I want to get involved. I want to protect myself. How do I engage right. the last deal? Very simply. So you could either call us, you can hit the website, uh, go right to the Amazon Marketplace. There's three ways to go there. You can hit right the Marketplace, pull it down and deploy it. So there's a free trial. Uh, it's 30 days, you can go run. And uh, our support technicians are available uh, to, to help with the deploy. And we also have a very interesting component. We have an incident response team that'll look at the alerts uh, as they happen. So we'll check those threats out before you maybe even see them and make sure that they're not false positives to make sure they're actionable. And we inform the customer of that. So it's a the, the, our customers love that we get an A plus plus on that, and you know it can be noisy without the without the if you're not checking for false positives, right? So our team does that dynamically for the customers in the background, so it uh, makes it much more reliable. Tell me about the marketplace. How's that been for you guys? I I'm, I think that's the best thing out there. I mean, it's so easy to get de sales. How's that been working for you guys? Because Amazon's really been putting a re emphasis on this marketplace, and it's been paying off for them. Billions of people go there to buy. Yeah, it makes it very easy for for vendors. That's for sure. So yes, it's a uh, Amazon does a great job there. So literally, it's a click. We we follow their template for how to deploy products. So it's very standard for AWS, and we follow those processes. And it's a couple of clicks. You're in. Mm -hmm. um, the customer then optionally can can apply those to their um, enterprise accounts. Right. It it automatically hits their billing cycles. It's all taken care of. So they make it very easy to transact. It's similar to your iPhone. You you download an app, you pay for it, it's done. So they make it that simple. Right. So it's been invaluable for us because it brings brings opportunities into the into the door. It helps customers deploy much quicker. It helps customers uh, with licensing much easier. So it just it streamlines the process. Now you gave me a great idea for the Cube team. I'll put a little uh, voice activated Cube. Hey Cube. Buy, buy Elastio now in the marketplace and instantly right. connects over and crosses over. Great use of voice activated AI. Um, you know, all, kidding aside, all kidding aside, this is the next interface. You're starting to see users interface with AI, generative AI in particular as an interface, but data is huge on the back end of enabling AI value, whether it's, whether it's automation, automation or generative AI capabilities. How do you look at the AI wave for your business as the founder and CEO uh, it's obviously a tailwind for folks who have instrumented systems and access to data and text and, and content. Yeah, so for us, it's, 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 there's two components for it. So one is that our customers are generating a lot of AI data. They want that protected as well to make sure it's resilient. That's number one. So for us, we get a, we get a lot of uh, tailwind on that. That's a, that's a great thing. Uh, on the other side of it, on the technology side, we're looking deep into generative AI to help us optimize our models, right? So yeah. you'll see us, I think, over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, uh, really innovate there and try to leverage generative AI and some unique modeling that we can build mm -hmm. uh, to enhance our data integrity engine and to provide uh, more resilience for customers. Yeah, I remember, I mean, deep data inspection you're doing is incredible. I remember what the enablement was on the networking side when deep packet inspection helped a lot in the networking area, just there's more, more touch points and connections in the cloud, <laughs> a lot right. more data. This is a, a new, kind of a new, not a new area per se, but like use case wise, it's fairly new need. How, 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 is, how do you see that? 
Yeah, I think it is a new need. It's just because the volume and the, the like always go back to the cloud operating model. It's much different than on-prem. And the cloud enables businesses to leverage uh, data more easily. And that's that's the name of the game. So the volumes of data is, is increasing. The use of the data is increasing. The sophistication of the value of the data is increasing. All those things um, make that, a, quite frankly, a big attack target for the bad guys, right? Because <laughs> data is the most strategic asset for any company. So the integrity of that data is paramount. And uh, for us, that's a that's a that's a tailwind. Data is doubling and tripling, but our budgets aren't necessarily doubling and tripling either. You know, more yeah. consolidation on the tools, more platform view. I love the trend. I think what's happening in the security business with cloud is phenomenal. I think it's going to a lot more scale. And I think the AI will help. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. And again, congratulations for your success. I'd have Thank to you. ask you about your origination story. How did this all come together? Were you, you know, what? Were you scratching an itch? Did you see a need? Were you, you know, having a dinner with a friend? Were you in your garage? Tell, tell the origination story. So it's a kind of a combination of all that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so two companies ago, we did a company called Aperture as a data protection play. Uh, great business. It was in the mid markets, and we really focused on the app back then. And we 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 changed the paradigm from backing up data to restoring apps. And what we did so well in those days was Exchange. Remember, Exchange was the email platform, and when that went down, the company was dead. So we did a really good job of taking snapshots of those and inspecting the data to make sure we could tell you early and often if it was corrupted or not. So the the business could know before they need had a recovery event if if it was it was going to fail. So they think that they can proactively fix that problem. They would have much less downtime and yeah. they could recover faster if they did. So circa uh, 2010, uh, that company was acquired by Dell, did very well there. Circa, that was in circa 2010. Circa 2020, my uh, CTO came available, Adam Nelson, and uh, he just left the, the, Dell, the, the Dell platform. And we looked at this, this threat landscape. We're saying, man, that, that same concept of deeply inspecting the data applies to this world now because of the pervasiveness of cyber threats. Makes a lot of sense. We have a lot of expertise there. We have a lot of expertise with data because we lived there in the previous companies. So now the challenge was we looked at many of the incumbents. Most of them are 10 year old tech, right? Because they were they were started in 2010, including Aperture. What's needed in the cloud? So our opportunity was, hey, let's innovate in the cloud, create cloud native solutions, you know, designed for the cloud, which is different than designed for a legacy architecture, and then really focus on the integrity of the data and on cyber. So that's what we did. So we spent the last three and a half years uh, building this out. Um, we we raised a seed round. We just finished a Series A uh, most recently, which is great. Mm -hmm. And now we're just off to the races. And uh, we're core technology guys. Uh, we have really solid core IP right now. We believe, and you know that's our that's our strength. And now we're starting to accrete more and more customers, which we're excited about. And that becomes our real strength because now we're learning and learning and learning. So it's just a fun time. Raj, you guys have been very successful with the customers. Um, you mentioned Series A. How big is the company? Put a plug in. We guys looking for more engineers. You guys core technologists, you said. You go into market, you got more customers coming in. What's your goals? What are you looking for? Put a plug in for the company. Yeah, yeah, good. So, so we are. So we're looking for, uh, we're looking for a lot on the sales side right now. Our engineering team is, you know, close to 60 people or so. So it's a solid team. A lot of domain expertise in both security and uh, and storage. But we're looking for, you know, all types: product managers, uh, uh, solutions engineers are big for us. Salespeople are big for us. Uh, we have kind of a dual model. We focus on both transactional selling into the to the mid market. There's a lot of value with SaaS businesses in the cloud and so on. Uh, we also focus on enterprises because ransomware resilience a big pain there and they're very vulnerable. So. Um, so we have kind of a, a two-level step uh, sales team there. So we're looking for all the above, actually. And, um, you know, we're pretty aggressive on the, the hiring front. We have a, a very competitive um, interview process. Um, and it's a, it's actually such a fun time when you're, start, when you're building companies out at this stage. It's, it's great as you start to get your customers going. And just hearing the feedback from the customers is just amazing. And how they, how they, they feel more secure now and, and how we're helping them. So we take a lot of pride in that. Well, congratulations on founding a great venture. Obviously it's in a great space, great vision, great execution so far, looking really, really strong, great approach. I mean, this is very much needed. Uh, so congratulations. I'll give you the final word on this segment. Um, data resilience in the cloud is a journey for the folks watching. What's the number of few things, one, number one, two or three things they should do. What should they think about? How should they, what's their mindset? What advice would you give around being resilient with cloud and your data? 
Yeah, I, I think the the number one thing is don't forget about the data, right? Most companies uh, really focus on the perimeter defenses, which is very important, but don't forget about the data and make sure you have protection for the data. And it's not just making it immutable. It has to be inspected. And that's the biggest message I have for, for businesses today. Make sure that data is inspected and it's not compromised. And that's a very important uh, very important component of uh, a strong security posture. I love the deep data inspection uh, comment. I love that approach. I think it's going to be very relevant. Again, just protect the data. That's everyone. Everyone wants the data. That's where the action is. Just protect it. Nash, thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing your story on the showcase and can congratulate on your success. Thanks so much, John. Okay, Take yeah. care. John Furrier with theCUBE. This is a special presentation from theCUBE on Amazon Startup Showcase, season three, episode three. Thanks for watching.